The tragic news of Mauro Garcia's death shocked the world of football. The Uruguayan striker took his life before the season started. Garcia was found dead in his apartment after days of no contact. The top goal scorer in Godoy Cruz's history, gun in a blink. How did his life find such a tragic end? Before we tell you that please do support us by hitting the subscribe button. Santiago Garcia was going through a rough time in his life. He fell into a deep depression during lockdown. As loved as he was in Argentina, he missed his family in Uruguay. Due to COVID he hadn't seen his daughter in a year. He had also broken up with his partner and was living alone. Considered a legend at his club, he had asked for a leave of absence. Moro knew he couldn't handle the pressure. His intention was to treat his depression with professionals. My son was being treated by psychologists and a psychiatrist, said his mom Claudia Correa. At first he got the help and support he needed. But now the club's president is being held accountable, the same answer. The club's president decided to separate Garcia from the squad, preventing him to training with his first team and informing Garcia he wouldn't be considered anymore, even though Moro had six more months on his contract. That is when his home club, National, contacted him, offering to take him to the club in the final years of his career. He was hopeful the situation would resolve and he'd be released sooner. A mutual termination would have let Moro sign for National. But the negotiations between them got an improbable point. They were asking for percentages of high-profile players of our team, players scouted by Boca and River, said Alejandro Balbay, the vice president of National pointing at the Godoy Cruz. Godoy Cruz was trying to make a profit out of the situation. All the while, Moro was alone in his house, not playing. Isolated, depressed, and separated from his loved ones. Moro Garcia took the saddest decision and ended his life. Garcia was found dead on his bed, with a single shot to his head, with no signs of external intervention. This news paralyzed the South American football. Sadly, depression is more and more common in football. In Argentinian football alone, 10 players have taken their lives. That shocking figure is just in the past 20 years. Clubs need to work on their players' mental and emotional health. If a player gets a physical injury, they get the best treatment possible for them to get back to the pitch. But, if the player is mentally broken then, they do not get any sort of treatment. Admits such pressure and being away from family. They have nowhere to go. Football clubs should definitely work on mental health of the players too. What do you think? Do mention it in the comment section below. And before you leave, do not forget to hit that subscribe button as a token of love for our team who come up with these content. We'll see you in our next video. Until then, goodbye and take care.